Like many other children born before the 1990s, Pokemon games and Pokemon cards have been a big part of my life ever since I was a little kid. I can remember going with my mom on her weekly trips to Target and using any extra money I made from mowing my parents' lawn or selling candy at school to buy Pokemon booster packs or Pokemon tin boxes. In fact, as you guys can see in front of me, I have five empty tin boxes of Pokemon trading cards as I always used to get them for Christmas presents or birthday presents. The only issue is I have since stopped collecting Pokemon cards and I don't even know where they are right now. Hopefully I find them soon because who knows they might be worth a fortune. Anyways, I recently saw this trend of YouTubers and other social media influencers such as Logan Paul, Graham Stephan, and FaZe K investing thousands upon thousands of dollars into Pokemon cards in hope that they appreciate over time so that they can sell them for a profit. Seeing all of this madness going on definitely spiked my interest as I love learning about every single possible way to make money as a teenager and I also miss my old hobby of collecting Pokemon cards from when I was younger. So with that being said, in this video I am going to put my research glasses on and invest $500 into Pokemon cards that may or may not be worth thousands upon thousands of dollars in the future. Getting right into things, from the research I've done, it is clear that first edition Pokemon cards from 1999 or 2000 are the most valuable and rare. For example, right now you can get a first edition Dark Charizard card for $18,000 on eBay. The only issue is I'm not Logan Paul and I don't have $18,000 to spend on Pokemon cards. Luckily, it turns out that not only are first edition Pokemon cards a great investment, but so are the more recent recent generations. For example, when you take a look at the 2017 Burning Shadows booster box, you can see it's selling for $250 on eBay, and from that booster box, you can potentially get cards worth up to $1,000, such as the shiny Rainbow Charizard, if it is in perfect PSA 10 condition. As I did more research on good modern Pokemon cards to invest into, I came to a conclusion how I was going to spend my $500 in cold, hard cash. All right, guys, I am here on my computer sitting on the website ebay.com and I am ready to invest a fat $500 into three Pokemon booster boxes and a rare first edition Pokemon card in hopes that I'll be able to resell it for a profit in the future. So with that being said, let's start our shopping spree. The first Pokemon booster box I ended up buying was a 2017 Shining Legends Elite Trainer Box for $100. This set has a total of 78 cards in it, and three of them are valued above $200 per card. That is absolutely insane, so with that in mind, I ended up purchasing the box for a total of $105.50 after all taxes and shipping costs. The second booster box I am going to go ahead and buy is a 2017 Burning Shadows booster box for $230. This set features 8 different cards in its collection valued above $100, including the shiny Rainbow Charizard I mentioned earlier that is worth $1,000 alone in perfect PSA 10 condition. After all shipping and taxes expenses, this box came out to a total cost of $246.33, bringing our total spend so far for this challenge to $351.83. Lastly, the final box of cards I will be cashing out and buying is the 2019 Hidden Fates tin. This tin is relatively newer, but it has multiple cards in its set that are valued above $200 each, especially certain EV Evolution cards. I can get this tin with four packs inside it for $39 on eBay, so that means after all tax and shipping expenses, the total cost for this tin comes out to $47.11. Now you guys might be thinking, Will only spent $398.94 on Pokemon cards, what about the extra Benjamin? Well guys, I'm going to be using this $100 right here to invest in a first edition Jolteon card, which happens to be my favorite Pokemon in the entire game. 
I found the card on eBay for only $100 pre-tax. So with that being said, let's click buy now, fill in some classified payment information, and boom, after all shipping costs, I spent a total of $108.65 on this card. And it's estimated arrival says here that it is October 21st. In total, I ended up spending $507.88 on Pokemon cards, and as soon as they all arrive, I will be sure to unbox them for you guys to see if we get some cards worth serious coinage. And boom, just like that, over the following days, my Pokemon cards came in the mail, booster box by booster box, and card by card until Friday, October 23rd, when it was time for the grand unveiling. Today is Friday, October 23rd, and well, it's my big day as all of the Pokemon cards I bought just arrived in the mail today, and it's time to unbox them to figure out if I made a good financial decision or a bad one. I am honestly so nervous about this grand unveiling because I spent so much money on Pokemon cards and if we don't get anything good in return It's gonna suck. So guys without further ado I have three booster boxes to open along with this cool little package So let's get into it starting things off the first box We are going to open is the 2017 shining legends elite trainer box this box is supposed to have quite a few cards in it So hopefully we get something good right off the bat while opening the 2017 shining legends booster box, I immediately had a bad feeling as things started out pretty rough. The only good card I was able to pull from the first half of the booster packs was a Shining Ho-Oh that automatically comes with the box, valued around $20 if kept in the plastic wrap that it comes in. After continuing to open more booster packs, I finally got my first and only solid pull from the box. For alligator holographic card and Raihu GX. This is a really good pull. That is right, guys. I pulled a Raichu GX valued around $30 if kept in perfect PSA 10 condition. Unfortunately, however, the card was only worth about five bucks since the centering was way off. In all honesty, that Shining Legends Elite Trainer Box kind of sucked. I would have been much better off keeping it sealed for the long term, but you know what? I did it for you guys, and now we are going to be moving. Moving on to the 2019 Hidden Fates tin. Some of the good cards in this tin include the Charizard GX, the Gyarados GX, which actually comes with this tin, and another really good card in this is actually just a plain old Mew. Immediately with the 2019 Hidden Fates box, I pulled a Gyarados GX that automatically comes with the tin and is worth around $5. Unfortunately, after that pretty solid pull, I opened up all four of the booster packs that come with the tin, and I was unfortunately not able to get a single ultra rare or GX card. Once again guys we pretty much wasted our money on this Hidden Fates tin right here since the only good card we got was the Gyarados GX that automatically comes with the tin. I would have been much better off just leaving the tin sealed and selling it down the line for a profit but you know what I did it for an awesome YouTube video and now we are moving on to the most expensive booster box that we are going to be opening in this entire video. It's the moment of truth guys because we are opening the Burning Shadows booster box. We spent about $230 on, but we have a chance of getting the shiny Rainbow Charizard secret rare that's valued above $1,000 in PSA 10 condition. So without further ado, let's open this baby up. The Burning Shadows booster box from 2017 comes with a massive amount of booster packs, so right off the bat, I knew I was bound to get something good, and luckily I did. Some of my great ultra rare pulls include a Necrozma GX, a Golosopod GX, and finally a Machamp GX. All of these cards are worth about $5, but after getting those cards, my pulls went into the major leagues when I got a Charizard GX valued at $200 in PSA 10 condition. It is a rare card. Boom! Charizard GX! Oh, oh, oh my gosh. This is worth a lot of money. Oh my gosh. I don't want to damage this. Oh my gosh, it's literally in perfect condition. After that amazing Charizard GX pull, I continued opening booster packs in the Burning Shadow set, and I ended up pulling an Alolan Muck Full Art GX valued at $40 in perfect condition. After opening all of those cards and pulling all of those ultra rares, it was time to move on to the final box of Pokemon cards. Wow, guys, that Burning Shadows booster box definitely had a lot of cards in it, but I'm not too sure we made our money back, despite 
getting some absolutely amazing pulls, such as the Charizard GX, the Muk GX, or the Machamp GX. But guys, we do have one last hope, and that is this mysterious box that I ordered from eBay not too long ago. You guys actually do know what it is, but you know what? I'm gonna unbox this single Pokemon card on camera for you guys to see. Inside of the box we got is a little padded envelope protecting the Pokemon card very nicely, and the Pokemon card should be in here. And boom, as you guys can see, it is a Japanese first edition Jolteon holographic card. This card cost me about a hundred bucks, but it is a great card to add to my collection for the long term. And I can guarantee that this card is going to appreciate dramatically over the coming decade. In conclusion, I did some number crunching and figured out exactly how much money I made back after spending $500 on Pokemon cards. To figure out the values of all of my cards, I separated them into rare cards, uncommons, and commons, and I also separated my trainer cards, my energy cards, and also my hollow and reverse hollow cards from one another. To figure out the value of the massive amount of non-hollow rare cards, uncommons, and common cards I had, I looked up whatever the average value of them were online. For common cards, the average value of them is about 10 cents each, and since I had 183, they were worth about $18.30. I also counted 77 uncommon cards at 25 cents each, and 24 rare cards worth about $1 each, bringing the running total for this challenge to $61.55. Next, I individually looked up the values for each of the reverse hollow and hollow cards I had on eBay, and figured out they were worth about a total of $52. After doing that, I individually looked up each of my energy and trainer cards, and after doing all of that research, I found out they were only worth about $9, which was depressing. Finally, I also looked up the values for all of the ultra rare cards I pulled or bought for this challenge, which includes the first edition Jolteon card worth $100, the Charizard GX card worth up to $200, and finally, all of the other rare rare GX cards I pulled worth a total of $80. That brings the value for all of the Pokemon cards I got for this challenge to $502.25, which is only slightly below whatever I paid for them. Long term, however, I'm definitely going to hold on to at least all of the rare cards I got for this challenge, and who knows, maybe 10 or 15 years down the line, I will be on Pawn Stars selling them for thousands of dollars in profit. Also guys, while I was editing this video, I found all of my Pokemon cards from when I was 10 or 11 years old, and yeah, it's pretty cool to see them all again.